Welcome to this demonstration on how to perform a comprehensive stroke symptom assessment. There are many symptoms of stroke, with the three most common being sudden face drooping, arm weakness, and speech changes. Stroke symptoms can also include sudden numbness or weakness of face, arm, or leg, especially on one side of the body, sudden confusion, trouble speaking or understanding speech, sudden trouble seeing in one or both eyes, sudden trouble walking, dizziness, loss of balance or coordination, and sudden severe headache with no known cause. If a patient reports any of these symptoms, it is important to use a stroke screening tool. Stroke screening tools identify signs of stroke and yield a positive result, stroke suspected, or negative result, stroke unlikely. There are several screening tools to choose from. The Cincinnati Pre-Hospital Stroke Scale is the most widely recognized. It assesses for facial droop, arm drift, and abnormal speech. Patients with one of these three findings as a new event have a 72% chance of an acute stroke. If all three findings are present, the chance of an acute stroke is more than 85%. The Cincinnati Pre-Hospital Stroke Scale is effective in detecting patients with stroke who are candidates for treatment, especially those with stroke affecting the anterior portion of the brain. Unfortunately, it is not as good at identifying patients with stroke affecting the posterior portion of the brain. In a study reviewing 736 stroke patients, 14.1% did not have any face, arm, or speech symptoms at presentation. Of these, 42% had gait imbalance or leg weakness, 40% had visual symptoms, and 70% either symptom. With their addition, the proportion of missed stroke patients was reduced to 4.4%. Because of concerns about missing potential stroke symptoms, the North Dakota Stroke Task Force recommends that healthcare professionals and volunteers assess for balance and eye changes, along with face, arm, and speech. To ensure a thorough exam, it can be helpful to use the BFAST acronym to recall the six steps to the stroke symptom assessment. You will begin the exam by completing the FAST portion of BFAST, which includes all three parts of the Cincinnati Pre-Hospital Stroke Scale and identifies the most common stroke symptoms. First, assess your patient's face. Have the patient smile or show their teeth. A normal finding would be for both sides of the face to move equally. An abnormal finding would be if one side of the face doesn't move as well as the other, resulting in a drooping or if the patient reports numbness on one side of the face. Step two is to test your patient for arm weakness. Ask your patient to close their eyes, then raise and extend both arms straight out for 10 seconds. A normal finding is if both arms move the same or both do not move at all. An abnormal finding is if one arm either does not move or one arm drifts downward compared to the other. Remember, your patient's eyes should be closed for this exam or they may be able to compensate for an arm drift. Next, test your patient's speech. Ask your patient to repeat a phrase such as, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. The patient should use correct words with no slurring. An abnormal finding would be if the patient slurs words, uses the wrong words, or is simply unable to speak. You can't teach a new dog old tricks. If there are any abnormal findings when testing for facial droop, arm weakness, and abnormal speech, it is time to activate your local stroke protocol. It is also time to establish your patient's last known well and symptom onset times. If symptoms are not noted when testing face, arm, and speech, the patient could still be having a stroke. Next, you will complete the balance and eyes portion of BFAST. This will help identify signs of a stroke in the posterior portion of the brain. First, assess for changes in balance by testing limb coordination. With this test, it is important to differentiate in coordination from weakness. To test arm coordination, we perform a finger, nose, finger test. First, have the patient touch their nose, then touch your finger to determine their arm length. Then, move your finger back slightly and ask the patient to touch your finger and back to their nose again. It is important that the patient fully extends their arm for this test. Repeat this a few times. Each arm is tested separately. If possible, stand on the side of the patient that you are assessing. The patient should be able to complete this task with well-coordinated movements in both arms. An abnormal finding would be clumsy, 
uncoordinated movements in one or both arms. That is not due to weakness. To assess leg coordination, we perform a heel shin test. Have the patient take the heel of their foot and run it up and down the shin of the opposite leg. This command may be confusing to some patients. So demonstrating the correct movement is suggested. You will need to test each leg separately. The patient should be able to complete this task with well-coordinated movements in both legs. An abnormal finding would be clumsy, uncoordinated movements in one or both legs. That is not due to weakness. Lastly, we check the patient for double vision or trouble seeing out of one or both eyes. Perform a visual field test to assess for partial or total vision loss. A visual field can be defined as the entire area that can be seen when an eye is fixed on a central point. The visual field can be divided into four quadrants, upper left, lower left, upper right, and lower right. Both eyes must be tested separately. To ensure accuracy when testing the visual field, you should stand one to two feet in front of the patient. Position your hands within the patient's field of vision, ideally no further apart than the width of the patient's shoulders. With the patient looking straight ahead, have them cover one eye at a time and answer yes or point when they see your fingers wiggling. Remember, you want to test the visual field of each eye. A normal finding would be if the patient can see in all four quadrants with both eyes. An abnormal finding would be if the patient cannot see in one or more of the visual quadrants with one or both eyes and or reports double vision. Next, test the patient's lateral gaze, which is the eye's ability to move horizontally to the left and right. Gently hold your patient's chin steady while having them use only their eyes to follow your fingers from side to side across their horizontal view. A normal finding is if the patient can track your finger all the way to the left and all the way to the right. An abnormal finding is if they can only follow your finger to one side or if their gaze is fixed to the left or right, even if you move their head gently from side to side. Once again, if abnormalities are noted during any of the balance and eye tests, it is time to activate your local stroke protocol and establish your patient's last known well and symptom onset. Remember that sudden severe headache with no known cause is a symptom of hemorrhagic stroke and is not identified during the BFAST exam. This finding would also require an activation of your local stroke protocol. That concludes this stroke symptom assessment demonstration. On behalf of the North Dakota Stroke Task Force, I'd like to thank you for your time and your dedication to providing quality stroke care.